Hello! Two chapters today, and that would be Hagrid's Tail and the Eye of the Snake. And what I found particularly interesting about this set of chapters is the concept that everyone has their story. That is, everyone, everyone has their life that they're living. And those lives are going to meet. Um, and it's really just a question of, of how often and for how long. That is to say that we are only the main characters fully of our own stories. There are always going to be other people who have different stories, who do different things, who go different places, who know different people, and they're going to be the main characters of their own stories. And those stories aren't always going to connect in the way that, ways that we think. Nor can we often change that fact. I mean, we can try and help influence it, but everyone else's story is simply going to be everybody else's story. For example, we have very directly, of course, Hagrid's tales. So we are speaking about Hagrid's story here, specifically about his adventure to go see the giants. Now this is something that we can hear about, but it's never actually something any of our other characters can experience. That was purely Hagrid's tale. In a lot of ways it's even dif different from Olympia's tale, and Olympia went on the same journey with him. But he is not exactly Olympia, so he's going to have different perspective, he's going to see things differently. For example, his tale is actually longer. We don't know why right now. His tale involves finding out about the death of his mother, which Olympia doesn't seem to have. Her tale has the use of magic in defense of him that, that he doesn't actually have on that end. So we have all these different people with their own stories, and we're just sort of bouncing off of each other. Sometimes these things are on a smaller scale, like Harry making out with Cho. But just like Hagrid's tale, this small moment with Cho shows us how wide the world actually is. Her focus is completely different, and in fact, a lot of the time, she's not even noticed by Harry or Ron. It's Hermione that has to tell them that no, she's being very upset about these things. And she's the one that has to point out again that there's going to be different sets of emotional emotions. The same moment, Harry and Cho kissing, is going to be a different experience for both of them. So what does this mean? Well, simply, one, never assume that you're going to be the main character of anybody else's story you have to open up to the fact that other people are going to experience other things, and you have to accept that fact. It can upset you, like Hermione writing to Crumb upsets Ron. It can worry you, like Hagrid's injuries are worrying the kids. It can make you so angry you could just scream and cry and throw things, like how Umbridge acts towards Hagrid. But that's the thing. To her, that's the story. She writes down that he has to resort to crude sign language, but you notice what she's doing the entire time? I'm going to walk around the students and ask questions. Yeah, well, okay, so you know that crude sign language that Hagrid just used? That you're now insisting on using? But that's it. Her story involves these things as a negative for Hagrid, but as not a negative for herself. She's so wrapped up in her own story that she's not allowing for this passage of other lives. At least not in a positive way. But Harry's learning to do that. He has concern for other people with their stories. Sirius being stuck in the house when he knows it's just driving him mad. Hagrid being injured, or possibly getting kicked out. We're also starting to get the, the possibility of the, 
these other students seeing the Festrals. We know that Neville can. He saw his grandfather die. We also know that there's a Slytherin who can. That hints at another story that we're, we're never able to actually touch on. But we know it's there. And it's there to remind us that the Slytherins, even in their most ignorant, ignorant and most annoying moments, are just as human as the rest of us. They have their own stories, they've had their own traumas that they've had to live through. And everything is connected together, and that becomes consolidated, of course, in the vision Harry then experiences, where he's part of this snake that attacks Mr. Weasley. This moment is the embodiment of how our lives shouldn't connect. We should never become the main characters of somebody else's story. We always have to remain the main character characters of our own, and in that way we should learn to love and respect ourselves. Especially since we are the ones that we have to live with constantly. People are going to come and they're going to go. But we are going to be the ones who are constantly there, and we have to learn to live with ourselves. Even better if we can learn to love ourselves. But we then have this moment with the snake that shows us that trying to be the main character of anybody else's story has a negative impact. This vision brings with it very physical negative symptoms. He's vomiting, his scar is throbbing, he's far from coherent in trying to explain things. He's frightening everybody else. There are going to be rumors going around about this moment. And Harry desperately tries to use it as a means of saving something. In this case, saving someone's life. In this moment where he is unwittingly the main character of somebody else's story, he tries to use it to his advantage. And unfortunately, it is going to become a liability to him. Because you can never be somebody else's main character. You should never try and force somebody into that position, nor should you force your own main character position onto somebody else. Don't walk into somebody's lives and expect them to all congregate around you, which is exactly what Voldemort ends up using against Harry. He uses this ability for Harry to switch between the two lives, to trick him. He takes advantage of it, and it's going to cost Sirius Black his life. It's going to cost Harry his godfather, and it's going to cost him a lot of trust in a lot of people. And that's because the stories can interact with each other, but you cannot take somebody and plant them into somebody else's story as the main character. But don't forget, that means that you're a minor character, or a major character, or even just a passing NPC in thousands of people's stories. The question is, do you want to use your story to override all those stories, and maybe make a lot of people miserable? or? Do you want to try and make the world a little better place? Hagrid's got his story, and he shares it with the trio. But he's also trying to help his brother. Umbridge has got her story about what half-breeds deserve, and that's going to get a lot of people hurt. In a lot of different ways. Okay, so, stories. It's weird to talk about stories and main characters when you're talking about a book, but you're not actually talking directly about the main character in the story of the... Inception. Oh, that makes my head hurt. I'm gonna keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you next time.